Hey guys, Tony here from Rolling the Bowling. Today I want to talk about the top five most annoying things about being a full-time RVer. So stay tuned. Sit back, enjoy the ride. We're on a wave. One track, no turning back. Forget yesterday. So number five of the top five things that annoy me about full-time RV life. No matter how much you clean your rig, get it prepared to hit the road, get it shining like a diamond, five minutes up the road, rainstorm. Now it's covered in grime, especially if you got a white RV. That's dirt and grime, grayish, wash up the walls, all that good stuff. And not to mention, if you have to run toward a little bit later in the evening, all the buck guts just get smashed all over the nose cone of the RV. Then you spend the next... 10 hours cleaning the RV again when you get where you're going, scraping all the skeeters off of there, all the bug guts and all the good stuff, you know, yum, yum, yum. So one, you got to wash all that stuff off so you don't have bees flying around trying to eat what's left over, you know, scavenging around. Then you got bees on your campsite, wasps and flies and all kind of nasty other crap. So that's number five, at least for me. So number four on the list is when you arrive to a new campground. You get all set up to find out the power doesn't work right or not sufficient. Or you get there and their water is just absolutely horrible. They have well water, which is, you know, that's fine. A lot of campgrounds have well water because they're out in the middle of nowhere. Even with a good filter, when the stench of the sulfur can still come through and you can smell that in your RV when you're using the water or taking a shower, that is highly annoying, highly disgusting, and just ugh. But the worst part of that is, is when they have so much iron content that it actually comes through and starts staining your toilet, your sinks, then you spend the next 10 hours, 15 hours, trying to scrub all that crap out of there to get that orange tinge out of your white toilet, uh, sink basins, and all that good stuff. So that's number four for me. Number three of annoying things about being a full-time RVer. It doesn't matter if you've got a $100,000 RV, $200,000 RV, or even a $1,000 RV. Things break, and you work on your rig a lot, which I don't mind working on my rig a little bit, but sometimes it just becomes a kind of a real pain because you're constantly working on something. It doesn't matter what it is. There's always something that needs to be repaired, especially on long travel. If you're in a state that doesn't quite take care of the roads, Arkansas, places just like that. Uh, you decide to go like we do, kind of go off on BLM land. You break stuff like shackle links and things like that. Granted, these things are not designed to do that. But it's still a pain in the ass when you have to fix all that crap. So you're constantly working on an RV. That is one thing that if you want to be a full-time RVer, if you don't have any skills, I suggest you get some because paying an RV tech constantly gets quite expensive. So number two on annoying things about being a full-time RVer is when you put everything nice and neatly up in your cupboards, your overhead cupboards, your pantry and things like that, no matter how well you secure them, when you get on some of them roads, Arkansas and other states that you know are pretty much pothole city, the roads are not level, there's drop-offs, yada, 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 idiots in traffic, you get around Atlanta, everybody just yada, 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 or you're going through Chicago, they just kind of you hit the brakes, everything moves around inside your RV because let's face it, when you're pulling your RV down the road, it's basically going through a damn earthquake every time you're going down the road. So, having everything bounce around, sometimes things get broken no matter how well you secure them. But mainly, it's just as soon as you are put, get to where you're going, you open a cabinet, everything comes crashing out. Uh, that's not always the case, but a lot of times it happens. So now you're restocking your cabinets and trying to straighten everything around, or everything that you thought you had in a certain area, if you're kind of uh, very persnickety about how things are put in a certain area when you get where you're going it's not quite there anymore it might have moved over like 15 spots or it's on the floor or something else smashed it uh, you take your bread and put it someplace else I'm gonna tell you, if you get your bread in one of the pantries you got some heavier stuff on the items yeah it's probably gonna come down and smash your bread so 
that's uh, kind of an annoying thing about being a full-time RVer. Number one annoying thing about being a full-time RVer is when you get to the new place you've been excited to get to and you get there and find out you got neighbors from hell on both sides. The neighbors that are party animals that make noise to all hours of the night. Uh, they run through your campsite uh, that are pretty much just almost lingering in your campsite you know their campers on that side you know they're pretty much trying to stay on the side of their camper that has nothing to do with their site they're in your site uh, the weekend warrior kind of people who don't live full-time RV so it's all about vacation and party and fun 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 but as a full-time RVer when you actually get up and go to work in the next morning you know it's kind of a pain it's really an annoyance uh, one of those annoyance that you can't just go over and smack the crap out of them because one, it's illegal anymore, you just can't do that, unfortunately. Um, you know, the 15 kids they got screaming outside your RV ours, and now you can't just go out there and just, you know, shut them up and things like that. So, that's the number one of most annoying thing for me as a full-time RVer. So, ask yourself before you become a full-time RVer, how much tolerance you got? Because you're going to need it. Guys, thanks for watching. But I'll just give you a little rundown on five things that annoy me as a full-time RVer. So if you guys have some annoying horror stories or what annoys you the most about being an RVer or even a full-time RVer, leave it down in the comments and I'll talk to you guys down the road. Be safe. Bye.